Hey there, welcome back to my channel. I know we haven't painted together in a while, so I decided why not just sit down and paint something just for fun. No pressure, no expectation, just relaxation, fun and calmness. Uh, because I feel like nowadays we just so, um, we need more calm in our lives and some, I don't know, just something pretty and enjoyable to do because life is just so crazy right now. And I'm gonna paint a winter scene because where I live it's winter time and um, it's perfect to paint something winter related. I live in a more warm area in Germany so snow is rather rarely here so I will just create a snow landscape here. And in my reference image you can see that we have snow part here and then we have in the background we have mountains we can divide this into thirds and somewhere here in the in this uh left third we have a small house and uh, someone's obviously there because there's some smoke coming out and we have some trees and it's a very calm situation it's like um, sunny but probably also super cold so for that i will just start with outlining where I want to paint something because I know some people struggle with planning out their paintings and they don't know where to start so I like to have some sort of an outline uh, or just like a sketch so I know exactly where I place something so I'll start by distributing or just distributing, by dividing my paper into the like this rule of thirds so I divide it into thirds uh, vertically and horizontally so I know where I place something so I will have more the emphasis is more on the on the mountains and the house so I don't want to have like a white space here just with snow um, that is on the bottom so I just the emphasis is on the top so I will move the bottom part somewhere on the lower third so here we will have maybe even just a little lower and then it goes up somewhere a little here And I already taped down my watercolor paper to this uh, board. It's I still figure out what's the best board to use. This is just some plastic uh, board. And I used 100% cotton watercolor paper. So this is going to be the front part. And there is this small little house somewhere here. The roof. So we, we just almost see it straight from the side. No, it's at daylight, so there won't be any um, lights coming out, so we can just keep it simple. And then on the back, behind this uh, house, we have trees, so I don't, I won't draw them, I just, I'll add them just like to have some, so I can, so I don't forget, I guess. Okay, so these will be the trees in the background. Uh, and this house is also it's behind a small hill so I will just add this snow in the front so it hides behind this little hill here and then I will add the background so here we only have this massive mountain so it's somewhere around here so it's like again it's divided into thirds so it starts somewhere here and we have um, goes up a little down goes down and some parts are darker so this part for example is light and this is this part is light I'm just outlining this just so I don't forget and everything else is pretty um, a little darker a little bit lighter so ah, and we also have this little chimney here and lastly we can also add some just a little like a hint so we don't forget where the shadows are so we have a shadow from the house on this side somewhere here and we also have this little someone walked in here so it goes to the side and then to the front like so and from here we have these um, darker shadows from maybe there's another house or a tree a huge tree or something like that so this will we'll add later so this is just like an overall outline and before I start painting I will remove some of the 
pencil right here because this is pretty much white and I don't want to look I don't want to have any pencil line looking through now if you have a knitable eraser use that I'm just I, I just ordered one and it's not there yet because I can't find mine for some reason but this is a soft eraser and it works uh, well as well all right just a little bit okay now we want to start with just the first wash and for this step i'm gonna use a big flat brush it's a flat ceramic brush by da vinci and i will just apply some clean water just make sure i don't have too much water or you have like pools everywhere we don't want that all right and so for the background i think like for the first wash i will use a little light wash of uh, cobalt blue it's a very light type of blue that doesn't get very dark even if you will use a lot of pigment i'm using my da vinci round brush well it's rather a mop brush kind of thing and i will add this to the top maybe i should use an even bigger brush because this is oh we'll see so i'm just applying this to the top down down and i have my my board slightly tilted so the water just moves downwards but here again if it buckles too much like you can see if even if it's goes down it there can be a small hill that moves the paint backwards but that's fine and i think i will also add yeah i think i will add just a little bit of another color so i have naples yellow it's like a little bit of an opaque pastel yellow and it works really well with such things so if there's a little hint of sun you can add this for example here i will add this just a touch a touch a touch of this color and mix this together just to have some like a loose like a hint of a glowy sun in the background. Then I can go back and just add this here. Yeah, I think I need a bigger brush. Let me whip out my big brush. So I have this another Da Vinci brush that I bought and I only use this for like really big washes. So I'm using this. It's much easier. And also we need something on the bottom. Now, if your room is very hot or just relatively warm, the paper might dry very quickly. And which is the case for me right now, but it's fine. this so I have a little bit of this first wash already in place and a little bit over my house because this white roof is not just white it just it has a little bit of sky reflection so it's a little bit of the blue so this is how it looks so I can see there's a little it's stretched and it's a little bit wavy but that's fine I think we feel like we put too much emphasis on having super super flat paper as long as you don't overdo your water and keep everything in check it's fine all right now let's move on to the hills now because this started to dry a little bit i'm gonna add a little bit of my brownish color so it's like a cool brown and I will mix this with my blue, just to make it slightly grayish. But I still need a little bit more. Yeah, so it's a, like a very nice, cool blue color, maybe even more blue. So it's like a very frosty. Yeah, so I think this looks good. And then I'm gonna add this to these areas where 
the hill is darker. Just adding it here, but here. So I'm painting this wet into wet, very con in control because you don't want to add too much water. Otherwise, it will just move too much. Now, because this will dry lighter and we still have some darker areas in our hill, I will add just a tiny bit more ultramarine because ultramarine. I think this will work really well with that ultramarine to my already dark mixture just to make it a little bit more saturated but like more in, um, concentrated and then again I'm applying it to these areas here and try to shape all these um, like how you call like these areas where there's no snow while keeping a little bit of this first wash for the snow. So here, for example, we can this here. And I'm applying this rather loosely and like randomly moving my brush. So it's not just like sometimes we focus too much on you know like all the little details and make it super super accurate and we we connect it we connect ourselves to the brush and move it very very uh intensively um at the same time we kind of lose this loose effect and maybe here i will just blend it out a little bit because this area is slightly lighter than the top. So I'm just, and I think I can still make it a little bit darker. But again, you need to work fast because now everything's drying. And you can also see that some of the shapes go like diagonally. So I'm just trying to mimic that as well. Because it's not just like straight down. It's more like goes a little down, uh, diagonally. Now in the background there's also a little hill that's in like covered in this foggy type of mist. So I think yeah, I think what we miss is the hill is just very very um, the fuzzy. So I think we need to add a little bit of shape to it. So I'm just adding just a pigment to this area here, shaping this because I don't want this to be like a fuzzy type of um, you know. Hill it has some shape. And here, this contrast is much more visible because there's like hard, um, harsh light falling down. So, I will try to recreate this here as well. Okay, now it's already getting dangerous because now everything's drying and if we add water we can just um, create these cauliflower effects which we don't want just want to add just a little bit more of these darker colors maybe even lift some of The colors here because this is like the brightest area and 
I think this needs still needs to be a little darker. I know we spend way too long on this because you can everything's already drying. dry brush effect here so it's kind of like a um, mix of everything here and sometimes hit this point where you're like oh my gosh what is this even what I'm painting this looks weird but even you uh, shouldn't forget that a painting goes through so many ugly stages where you are like oh my gosh maybe I should just restart and this is where where a lot of people quit they feel like oh this looks awful let's quit but each of the painting is just not done yet so we need to push through this phase and see what we can create so here i'm just lifting some of the paint just to create this fog not fog but this smoke coming out maybe even a little bit with my tissue paper just very quick carefully okay i think that's enough and uh, on the background we have this hill so this is what i wanted to add so i think i will just use this color they use already and add that here just very loosely maybe add out just a little bit of blue so it's in the background I think what I still don't like is this here. It just looks too even. I'm just using my hand. I think this already looks better. Just having some, you know, randomness. All right, now let's focus on this bottom now this is already also drying so we need to be careful and then i will use my bigger brush just going again over this whole thing and add some of this blue color that's the shadow so here here's this shadow going and here needs to be darker so i'm adding more of my uh, brownish color and also add some ultramarine this is like a very dark here and also on this side and we have this path going from this house and we can still change things later just want to have something I already put onto the paper we can work with. I know it looks a little weird, but I just need to stick through this. All right, now we can go ahead and dry everything. Now, once everything is dry, we can go ahead and paint the house and for this i will be using a smaller brush i'll be using my uh, naples yellow again for the first layer just to have some first wash ready and then i'm using another brownish color like i need to write down those names because i don't remember how they're called but it's like a chocolate brown Mix this together with my Naples yellow on top just to make it slightly darker in some areas. And then, once this is slightly dry, you can go in with this other burnt, um, uh, burnt, yeah, burnt umber type of color with this brown and just add some of these shadows here to create the house 
if it's the paint spreads too much just remove some of the moisture from your brush and then go back in so your brush will be like a sponge and won't release too much water adding more darkness here because this is also like the one of the darkest areas and under the house again door now i don't want this to be like super super realistic so i'm not gonna make it exactly like in my landscape reference Just adding a little bit of that in the meantime you can also go in while this is drying you can go in and paint the trees in the background now they are not super super um like they are slightly out of focus but not super out of focus so um i think still i will use um the dry wet and dry technique and for that i will be using this olive green color just mix it to some of my older mixture so it's like a very very vibrant green still and i will be using a little bit of my what was this naples yellow just to make it well it's still a too too bright i will add a little bit of my chocolate brown just to make it slightly darker and more like a yellowish green okay and then I'm gonna start applying this somewhere here. Let's just see how the color looks. Yeah, it's fine. Maybe add a little bit more of this brown. Okay, and now I'm just gonna add the trees slowly one by one somewhere here. In the background, just dabbing it on. Starting, it's too much moisture in my brush. So I'm releasing some and just adding it here up and dab it downwards maybe add even i think i still need a little bit of lightness here so i'm adding a little bit of my yellow ochre to the mix so instead of just green I have some yellow going on here as well keep doing this and then when I reach my house I will make sure that this actually the roof actually stands out because now it blends in with the background too much so I still want people to see that this is snow and there's a roof so i will add another tree somewhere here maybe it's like very close to the house just like this and make sure whenever i paint it it's behind the roof so it will stand out a little bit more and then we can go in and add more um, shadows into the trees so again i will be using a little of this brown with my green Maybe even just a little bit of blue, just to make it even darker. And add this on top. So we have everything from yellowish to greenish, green to a little bit of blue. Everything is there to make it a little bit more realistic. Part is actually slightly lighter, there you can see more yellow. So I think I will add just a little bit of a bright yellow on top I mean this won't work as well anymore because this like watercolors are rather transparent but still it looks a little bit oval, like it's uh, the light is falling down and then I do the same on the other side
Now you can see that this front is still way too light. Even though it looks similar to our reference image, it still needs to be darker. So what I'm gonna do is I will apply clean water on top again using my big F wash brush. And apply it clean water all over this whole lower area again. If something like moves into your paint because it's still wet, it's fine, don't worry. And then I will just apply more paint on top to make it darker. it still needs a little bit of darkness so again i'm using my brownish colors with a little bit of blue and this and we also need to make the house a little bit darker and i will be using again some chocolate brown a little bit with blue make it darker and again i'm gonna in and apply another layer on top just to make it darker and once everything once everything is dry you can go in and finalize any lines that you ha might have missed I think something that I realized is that I placed this house a little bit too too much on this area. I think I should have put it a little bit lower. So it's not just like like it's it's kind of unbalanced now. I should have put it a little bit lower. Maybe if I can cut this off later. But now we need to add some final details. So I will be adding for example this roof, a uh, roof this chimney thingy and then I also want to add some of the darkness back to the house like for example we have um, these lines here going left to right we need to add a little bit of shadow on the left a little bit of blue gray color here on the side so we can actually see that there is some thickness of this um, snow so it's not just flat so it's somewhere here all right now as the last step what we can do is add some white back to the painting with white gouache these trees are they needs a little bit of snow on top so i will use some white gouache and then mix it with a little bit of water place some of this snow back on top so it's a little bit more snowy so i'm just adding this um, snow just similar to how i painted my trees in the first place so there will be like on the side some snow on the left right and downwards And then if you want, you can also use the same technique to add some of the like snow ice ice sickles hanging down from the house. So here I'm just adding those with same color, same white gouache. And maybe you can also add a little bit. I feel like there needs a little bit of yellowish as well because it's a sunny day. 
here on the top but nothing shows up here so i will add just a tiny like a very light glaze of this yellow color on top just a little bit it's like my Na naples yellow and i want to have a little bit of this glow from the sun on on the roof just a little bit now it doesn't shouldn't look like it's yellow super yellow it's just a hint now it will dry lighter than it looks now so don't freak out and then a little bit of texture on the bottom so it looks a little bit like it's volume there's volume it's not just flat so i'm adding a little bit of shadows on the bottom part here all right Let's remove the tape and see if there's anything we can still add, remove. I think this needs to be a little darker because there's just still too light here so I'm gonna add a little bit of dark blue back here just to add some contrast in between all these colors that I already applied And there needs to be like a very, very dark spot. So I'm using indigo blue. And if you look at in this picture as a black and white, you can still see that some areas needs to be still darker. Like here, for example. The, the only thing that I didn't think of was this line here it should have the movement is quite slightly different from my reference image plus i feel like it looks better if it's a little bit like that because there's too much snow in the foreground and i don't like it that much so i think this is better like that maybe <laughs> i kind of like this here <clears throat> and what also we can do is we can remove some of this paint here just to i can I'll make it a little bit softer so this now look looks like it glows a little more yeah so this is how it looks maybe this needs to be a little bit darker it stands too, out too much even though it's a light area it's too bright and if you want you can go back in and add some tree back like snow back But I think what's one thing is still not uh, something I'm not still not happy with is this area. I feel like this area is as um, this has the same value as the background, and you can see that in the picture the background is lighter than the foreground, like the snow here. So I need to still make it slightly darker. So I'm just reusing my old tape. Sometimes it's something you need to also do, like think about. Uh, you might have the right colors and things like that, but the contrast is just different. You have areas that are just way too bright in comparison to something else. So, so one of the things that might make your painting less realistic is the use of the different values. So it's like kind of just the same. So I'm gonna back in and add some of the colors back. I'm just adding this on top again very loosely and then I'm gonna back in I might also I think some like a cobalt blue works as well, as well to get there 
and again I can look into the areas that's like sh shaping it the same way as I wanted it earlier so going it like downwards and here again I make it go out like spread it out more so there's a little bit of space in between and here and I think that you already see the contrast between this blue here and this blue in the background which makes a huge difference and you can see there's also a little bit like a purplish color so we can add a little bit of like a pink color to this and there you have it and if you're just starting out and if you don't know how to mix colors what techniques to use my book no feel watercolor is officially available for pre-order it will be released in just a few days i'm super excited about it i walk you through how to mix colors what supplies you need and all different techniques and a super simple a little advanced watercolor technique so you can get started with watercolor painting and i super super excited about it i cover the foundations in an easy step-by-step -step way so if you want to learn how to paint with watercolors you don't know where to start grab my book no fill watercolor you can find a link in the description box and down below thank you so much for watching have a wonderful day and i will see you in my next video bye